You're listening to Legal Talk Network. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Special Reports on Legal Talk Network. This is Melanie Hallis, and I'm the host for today's show, which is being recorded on location at the ABA's Antitrust Law 2017 Spring Meeting in Washington, D.C. Joining me now, I have John Villafranco. Welcome to the show, John. Well, thank you. Happy to be here. Before we get started, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you work and what do you do? Ah, so I work at Kelly Dry and Warren. Uh, I'm a, an advertising lawyer. I started in the antitrust section, but I've been doing uh, just straight consumer protection and advertising law for a number of years now. So for a young lawyer, can you summarize what advertising law is? Yes. I mean, well, the Federal Trade Commission, uh, as you may know, it's divided into two bureaus. There's the Bureau of Consumer Protection and Bureau of Competition. Uh, within the Bureau of Consumer Protection, uh, there is an advertising discipline. So essentially what I do is uh, I represent companies who are uh, where the government is accusing them or alleging that they cannot substantiate claims that they're making or that their marketing practices are unfair and deceptive. And I also, and I, this is probably the more interesting part of my practice, I represent uh, companies who are challenging each other about the truthfulness of, of their claims. That's interesting. And what's at stake if an uh, advertising claim is brought? Well, I mean, if an advertising claim is brought by the government, uh, the, the company's very existence might be at stake. I just had a case uh, where I represented Herbalife at the Federal Trade Commission, and uh, there was a question of whether or not the company, uh, whether its business model was uh, unfair and deceptive. And so in that case, uh, which ultimately settled and the company continues to do business, uh, the company's very existence was at stake. Often, if I'm doing cases where you you have an advertiser challenging claims made by a competitor, uh, it could be that we're seeking an injunction trying to make a competitor stop making a claim, or and often we're trying to get damages for any uh, injury that the company might have sustained. So, for example, I've been representing uh, Sprint for about 17 years now, and in that uh, area, telecom area, it's very aggressive, uh, very aggressive industry segment. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges to claims that are being made. And how did you get into advertising law? So I started at uh, Collier, Shannon, Scott, which way back in 1991. And at the time, Collier, Shannon, Scott was probably the biggest antitrust section in, in the in the country. It had some unbelievable heavyweights, uh, you know, people who have, have a long history in the section, Jim Rill, Jim Loftus, both former chairs of the section, Sean Bolin, um, Barry Nigro, uh, many, many uh, bold-faced names in the antitrust world. And I came in and started on the antitrust side, but uh, soon thereafter, I, I was put on a case involving the cartoon camel for uh, known as Joe Camel. It was an R.J. Reynolds case. The issue was whether or not the, uh, the cartoon caused smoking initiation and uh, this was a, a big case that was brought by the consumer protection uh, folks at the FTC, and we represented the company, and I was on it for a couple of years and, and was just completely hooked by the advertising aspects. And are there do's and don'ts of advertising that you tell clients prior to claims being brought? Absolutely, there are. I mean, uh, the list can be very long, and uh, yes, so we do a good deal of counseling to try to make sure that clients can substantiate the claims they're making in, in commerce and they're not engaging in unfair and deceptive acts and practices. But oftentimes we're brought in when there's a problem, when there's a, an allegation by a competitor or by the government. Are there settlements in advertising law? Yep, there are definitely settlements. In fact, I mentioned one, Herbalife, that case settled just this summer, a very major settlement with the commission. Uh, and uh, you know, that's often, you know, what you do when you're negotiating with the Federal Trade Commission, when you're responding to civil investigative demands, you get to a point where you uh, explore with the government whether a consent order makes sense and uh, for both parties. And, and if it does, then you obviously are seeking the best possible terms for your client. And what's the most interesting case you've worked on in advertising law? Wow. Well, you know, the Joe Camel case was super interesting. I was a senior associate at the time, and you know, there was an extensive discovery. It was a very high-profile case, as you could imagine. It was a cartoon camel. The government was alleging that the camel caused initiation. And there was, we contended, and there was a good deal of data that, that contradicted those allegations. So we, the case actually went to uh, administrative litigation, a part three proceeding at the Federal Trade Commission. And uh, 
there was a day where, uh, when I was seated, seated at the council table, I thought we were going to be arguing a discovery motion, and I was alone at the table, and uh, the FTC walked into the room and withdrew the complaint. And that was one of the, the biggest shocks of my entire career. And, you know, they would say, to be fair, that uh, there was a state settlement uh, that maybe mooted some of the issues. But to be at trial with the Federal Trade Commission and to have them actually uh, leave the room, essentially, was quite a big moment. And I've done some other really, some cases that on the competitor side that I I've thought were interesting and fun. I did a case for Burger King a while back where... Uh, they were sued by uh, Chick-fil-A and, and Truett Cathy, and this will give you a sense of the competitive the kind of aspects of what we do. And Mr. Cathy was convinced that, uh, well, Burger King had a chicken sandwich, and then they came out with their BK broiler, and uh, Mr. And so they needed the name for their first chicken sandwich, and, and they decided to call it the original chicken sandwich. And uh, Mr. Cathy took issue because he contended that he invented the chicken sandwich. And so uh, he brought a Lanham Act challenge under Section 43A of the Lanham Act, said it was a, a false claim being made by Burger King and it was causing him injury. And uh, we defended that case. And it was, uh, I think we sent a paralegal to the Library of Congress and, and she came back with a, a menu with a chicken sandwich on it from like 1890. And, and that pretty much sealed the deal and we won the case. <laughs> And what trends do you see in your practice? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, right now, uh, I mean, a big part of our practice is defending companies, uh, representing companies before the Federal Trade Commission. And we have a very, very quiet commission right now. Um, we only have two commissioners. That makes uh, matters hard to vote out. We're not seeing a, a lot of CIDs. So um, I think that, uh, and then of course, it's it's unclear who will be appointed and, you know, what direction uh, the new appointees, the new chair, uh, and other commissioners are going to take the commission in. I think the the sense is that it's going to be a little bit more quiet than it has been in recent years from the Federal Trade Commission, and and I think as a result, we'll probably see more competitor challenges. And that and by that, I don't only mean Section 43A of the Lanham Act. So you know where companies are suing each other over false claims, but uh, there's also a very uh, active element in the advertising space at the National Advertising Division, which is an industry self-regulatory body in New York where companies can challenge each other and there's briefing and an argument and eventually a decision. So I think we'll see more of that. Great. And what roles have you had in the antitrust section? Okay. So I've got a, you know, I love consumer protection. I love advertising. Um, and uh, it's really been my focus. And when I started uh, the consumer protection element at the in at the section or in the section it was almost a boiler room operation. There weren't that many folks doing it. You know, Bill McLeod, the current chair, he was a consumer protection lawyer or, or at least part time, and and Bob Langer, um, but there weren't that many. And so, I've uh, really focused on consumer protection throughout my many many years, and I think now it's been probably 25 years in the section as I started right out of law school. So I've been vice chair on the Consumer Protection Committee. I chaired that committee. I've been the chair of the uh, Advertising Disputes and Litigation Committee. Um, I've been on the Long Range Planning Committee twice. I have I was the editor-in-chief, uh, co-editor-in-chief, along with August Horvath, of, of the initial version of Consumer Protection Law Developments. Um, I have been spring meeting chair for two years, um, and I've chaired the uh, Consumer Protection Conference twice. So a fairly active, mostly consumer protection oriented history with the section. And how has participation in the section helped in your career in advertising? Well, that's a great question. It's been instrumental. I mean, I, it's a great opportunity to uh, engage in an academic way with uh, other lawyers. So people that you might be adverse to regularly, uh, especially in my area, um, you know, we are very much engaged in a in an academic sort of way, and uh, I uh, I'm also uh, it it allows you to meet and work with regulators, get to know them again in a in a way that is not adversarial, and you know it it's just nice to have a I think a, a little break from argument and you know uh, adversarial actions and to and to focus on. Uh, legal issues. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a really great experience. 
Now, are there any programs coming up about advertising if someone wants to learn more about it? Section programs? Yes. Yeah, I, I think the thing to do, there are two really great committees, the Advertising Disputes and Litigation Committee and the Consumer Protection Committee. There's also a Privacy Committee. Uh, and you know, joining those three committees is the best way to be uh, up to speed on current programming. Great. And do you have any advice for a young lawyer who might be interested in advertising? Join those committees. Definitely join those committees. Keep your ears open. Uh, there are all sorts of opportunities uh, to, to get involved on programs, on publications, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and it's a really, you know, the, I mean, the section's great. It's a pretty, even though there are so many members, it's a, it's a really tight group uh, at the section. And I think within that, this tight group, the subset of consumer protection lawyers are, are especially tight. It's a, it's a really wonderful opportunity. And, you know, I've uh, been practicing since 91, and every single associate that comes in to my practice group uh, is strongly encouraged to get involved, and no one ever regrets it. Great. And for my last question, outside of advertising law, what do you do for fun? Ah, so for fun, I love bicycles more than anything else. I have lots and lots of bicycles. I, uh, I live in Colorado and uh, I live at altitude. And if I'm not in front of the computer, then I am either on my mountain bike or my road bike or my cross bike, and, or I'm working on those bikes in my workshop. So that's how I like to have fun. That sounds great. So it looks like we've reached the end of our program. I want to thank John for joining us today. If our listeners have any questions or wish to follow up with you, how can they reach you? Well, there aren't too many John Villafrancos out there, so uh, and it's, it's spelled exactly as it sounds. You can Google me. Um, I'm at Kelly Dryan Warren. You can call me at any time, email me. I'd, I'd love to talk some more about being an advertising lawyer, uh, especially being an advertising lawyer, consumer protection lawyer within the section of antitrust. And this has been another edition of Special Reports. I'm Melanie Hallis. Until next time, thank you for listening. Thank you. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Thank you.